In this video, I will show you how to use a Home Depot bucket and turn it into a cable winder. You can wind it by hand or by power drill. It works for 100 feet, 12 gauge cable. Okay, let's get started. First, you need to use the compass to measure the diameter at the bottom of the bucket. You need to minus one eighth of an inch to leave some space there, or it will get stuffed. Next, use the jigsaw to cut the circle out. I am using three quarter plywood. You don't need to use the same. You can use any scrap wood from your old cabinet or desk. MDF or laminated board would work too. Make sure it is solid enough. I was drilling a hole in the middle of the board because I was trying to install the fidget spinner. But it did not work well at all. You don't need this step. I did it for you, so you don't have to repeat my mistake. Many of you may be wondering if you can use casters. I did it too. It did not work as good as I expected. So forget about this, don't waste time. You will get stuck when you are pulling the cable out from the bucket. Before I showed you how I solved the problem, let's move on and work on the center. I am using a 3 inches ABS drain pipe. PVC would work too. Then I cut it using the miter saw. If you don't have one, don't worry, just cut it with any type of hand saw. Just another DIY tips, remember to use masking tape as the guide, otherwise it doesn't give you a good result. Next, you get this metal brackets from your local hardware store. You need four of them at the bottom and four at the top. It's pretty straightforward, honestly. All you need is to secure them using the screws. For this type of project, you don't need to pre-drill. Just drive them in. I am using number 8 3 quarter wood screw. Of course, any other type of screws would work too. The top portion is very similar to the bottom, except the measurement is different. As you can see, the diameter is 11 and a quarter. In this case, I would do 11 and 1 eighth. I don't have a fancy workshop with the dust collection system. I am just using a cheap shop vac. This is my way to find the middle point, so I can mount the ABS pipe right on the center. Using the end I cut it off from the ABS pipe earlier. This is such a good template. I think I lied. I did pre-drill on the ABS pipe, but not on the wood. I believe the rest is pretty much self-explanatory. I hope you got the idea. The next step is to cut open the bucket on the side. Grab a sharp knife or a razor blade and a sharpie. For those who are not in North America, sharpie is a permanent marker. Just like we don't say, do you have any tissues? Instead, we would say, do you have any Kleenex? I hope that helps. One question you may ask is, how big should I open the bucket? Well, it's really up to you. This part should not be too difficult if you have a good blade. To protect the cable and for cosmetic reasons, I am using this product called Door Edge Guard. You can find it from your local automotive supply store. I got mine from Canadian Tire. It has the adhesive inside, 
All you have to do is to cut it to the length you want and push it in. I thought it was a bit small, so I wanted to make it a little bit bigger. There you go. Next, we need to drill a hole at the top for the cable to pass through. The diameter is up to you. One or one and a half inches is fine. This is the sander attachment for the drill. I found an old one in my basement. All you have to do is to drill four holes and mount it on the top. I applied some amazing goop at the bottom to make sure that it will not slip. If you don't have one, buy it from your local hardware store. It's less than 10 bucks. You will need some velcro tape to secure the cable. Before doing that, let's put the cable through the hole. Probably you need a couple of feet. That is going to connect to your 120 volt outlet. Now put the screw through the velcro tape and secure it. As you can see, there is no pre-drill is needed. Trim off the extra. Do the same for the other side. You will need two of them. This part is optional and debatable. It depends on the quality of the bottom of your Home Depot bucket. If it is completely flat, you can skip this step. Now it comes to the most important part of this project. We need a girl named Susan who is very lazy. Ladies and gentlemen, Lazy Susan! You can buy it from Amazon. Make sure you get the 10 inches one, not the 12 inches. It's around $15 Canadian or $10 US in the States. This is the 10 inches Lazy Susan. Oh, by the way, for those who are not living in Canada or in the States, this is technically called turntable or rotating tray. So why is this Lazy Susan that good? Because Susan has ball bearings. To maximize the performance and reduce friction, I pried open the Lazy Susan and got rid of the top part. Now let's put everything together and drop the Lazy Susan into the bucket. 10 inches fits perfectly. You may want to ask, why not use adhesive and glue the Lazy Susan to the wood or the ABS pipe? Indeed, a couple of years ago, I did that, but I did not like it. It's all about a concept in IT architecture called decoupling. You always want your component not depends on the others. If you do it this way, you can replace the Lazy Susan easily. I think this is the part you have been waiting for. I will show you how it works in a second. If you ever got a hundred feet 12 gauge cable, you know how difficult it is to manage that. Not only power cable, we can also use it to wind the rubber hose for your air compressor. To set it up, run the cable through the hole, leave a couple of feet and secure it with the velcro tape. Next, attach the power drill to the sender attachment. We are ready to go. For your satisfaction, the cable winding is done in one shot with no video trimming. Okay, let's go.
you go. What do you think? For unwinding, there is a trick I want to show you. You will need to put a 2x4 in the front. Because the overall weight is not that heavy, the bucket will move when you pull the cable. But this will solve the problem. Let's get started. It did move a little bit, but we have successfully unwinded 100 feet 12 gauge cable in no time. This is another one I made, and I tried it on the rubber mat, and I unwinded it in one shot without 2x4 in the front. Of course, if you want, you can create another variation using releasable cable tie to secure it to an object. Compress the holes for sure it will work, but I just want to show you What if my power drill runs out of battery? I will show you how to do hand winding All you need is a screwdriver Put it in the hole and start to turn clockwise. Simple enough? Oh yeah. I hope you enjoyed this simple and practical DIY project. My goal is to inspire more people into DIY home improvement. If you love this project, give it a thumbs up and you may want to check out other crazy DIY projects on my channel too. Remember to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.